Hi, this is Mark from NicheProfitsTool.com, and if you'd like to get even more new videos and trainings that show you how to quickly find profitable niche markets, then just go to NicheProfitsTool.com right now to get immediate access to all the videos for free. Again, that's NicheProfitsTool.com. Thanks again. Okay, this is Mark Mathis from Niche Profits Tool again, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the level of competition for a particular keyword phrase. Uh, in the last video, we actually looked at how to determine which were the most profitable keywords or some that you would probably want to focus on. And again, in this one, the second piece of the puzzle is how competitive is that particular keyword term. So in this example, we're doing trout fishing, and we're trying to decide what area of trout fishing, uh, what keyword phrases, what types of products would be good ones for us to go after. Now, one thing that you can look at that's very crude, but it gives you a, a decent gauge just at a glance, is this competition level. So, what this is telling you is how competitive is the pay-per-click space for this particular keyword phrase. If it's more competitive, over to the right more, that means typically that's a more profitable keyword phrase. So you typically go where the competition is or where there is at least some competition. If there's no competition or it's very, very low, well that typically tells you that people have tried to make money with that particular keyword phrase or in that market and it's very difficult so they've gone on uh, and spent their monies elsewhere. You can also see for this one, fishing knots, the competition Competition is low and the estimated uh, cost per click is very low as well so uh, that would tell me that people are looking for more information uh, videos or how-to information and they're not really willing to uh, pay a whole lot for it conversely if you look right here uh, you can see fishing games the competition is moderate but the average cost per click is very high so it's a very popular keyword phrase that people are searching for so people are probably developing um, fishing games websites and then wrapping that around you know AdWords ads or uh, other banners or promotional items like that to make money off that so for this example what we want to do is uh, let's just go down here and pick one where the competition is medium level and one that has a relatively high uh, cost per click so we'll just click on this and sort descending by cost per click so I just went down this list and looked at them and uh, one that we're just going to try is fly fishing gear so you can see it has a uh, fairly good global monthly <laughs> one of those is pay-per-click ads up here and you can see on this page um, these people are paying the average of a dollar forty three for each click that they're getting well you have to sell fairly high profit margin items to uh, be able to sustain that dollar amount on each click but one thing that we want to pay attention to is they show pay-per-click ads over here over here uh, they also show results from Google base or Google Merchant Center so this is a free service that you can actually submit your products in so that's very good um, and then it also has uh, brand related searches and I think these are actually coming from uh, the Google base system again so there are a lot of opportunities other than just getting your own website to rank very highly like it's very difficult to have this first place organic spot but um, you can see some of the other opportunities again pay-per-click uh, pay-per-click over here and what you'll do next is to uh, go to each one of these sites and kinda get a feel for what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong you want to look at number one the title of the home page that's being ranked highly. You can see right here it has fly fishing in the title. You can also see that it has fly fishing gear on this one. This is also a sub page of uh, this main site. Uh, you can say that, see they have a, a subdirectory that's called fly fishing that met, matches very closely with what people are searching for. Another thing that you want to do is check the number of backlinks uh, to this particular page and uh, the number of indexed pages. So the number of indexed pages is basically how many pages Google has actually gone out and indexed into their search results. So both of those are very important factors along with the title, the description, making sure that you have the words in your description as well. So what we'll do right now is we'll copy this URL and we want to go to a site called Yahoo Site Explorer. So let's just go to uh, Yahoo Site Explorer and it comes up right here and then what we want to do is to enter that URL into the Yahoo Site Explorer to find out how many pages they have indexed and how many backlinks they have. Okay, so we're here at Yahoo Site Explorer and we'll want to 
paste in that URL that we just found and explore. Now in here you can see they have 41,318 pages indexed and then they have 59,865 backlinks. So this is uh, uh, quite a bit and again it depends on your market but I would take this URL and this number of pages indexed and this number of backlinks and uh, write that down either in a notebook or in a spreadsheet and then I would go to the next page and do the same exact thing just so we can see exactly what we're up against as far as uh, competition level. So we're back over here and this page is actually a, a sub page so we're not going to research that one. We're going to go to the Sims Fishing. Uh, you can see that they do not have the term fly fishing in their title nor do they have it in the description. Let's see how large they are as far as backlinks and index pages go. So they have 2,306 pages and 23,990 backlinks. So that tells you something right there. That tells you that you don't have to have a tremendous number of pages to rank highly in this and you don't even have to have half as many backlinks as a number one site. Um, you, it could be a matter of just better optimizing the anchor text and the links that you're getting back to your site and getting them from more sites that are related to fishing products. It could be a matter of optimizing your page uh, titles, your descriptions, and so there's a lot of different things that you can look at and what I would do then is I would go through each of the different sites on this page and I would keep all this information uh, from Yahoo Site Explorer in a spreadsheet or in a notebook so I could reference it later and then what you would do the very last thing is you would go and you would type your site in there. If you don't already have a site then skip that step but it would give you an idea if you already have an existing site how your site relates to these competitors uh, so you can get a better feel for how competitive that particular market is. Now the reason that we're using the Yahoo Site Explorer and we were using Google External Keyword Tool before is that Yahoo Site Explorer seems to provide a more accurate description uh, of the details of actually how many pages are indexed and how many backlinks are um, out there right now for a particular site. Google does not want you to know exact numbers on the number of pages they've indexed of a site or the number of backlinks pointing to a site because that would give people more of an insider angle on exactly how their algorithm works which is basically giving everyone the keys to the castle. So they don't want that information out there. So they skew the data somewhat to make it appear differently than it really is. So that's why I use Yahoo Site Explorer uh, to actually find this kind of information right there. And so if we go back to our example, this fly fishing gear page, we would also want to go, you know, and look at these pay-per-click ads right here, see what they're doing good, see what they're doing bad, and write up notes on all those. So we could uh, potentially develop a better landing page, a better offer, and then a better product and pricing. And then we can figure out exactly how to go after this market and get traffic for the people who are actually looking for this fly fishing gear. And again, fly fishing gear is fairly broad. You could niche it down even more. You could talk about salmon fishing and, and, and so forth. Uh, you could get into different parts of the country. Uh, you know, Idaho fly fishing gear, etc. So that's how you do it. This is a long way to do it. And I'm going to show you in a second a really cool tool that will allow you to basically automate all this. And uh, if you just, if you have no money and you just want to get started today, the tools that are out there right now that I've just shown you will give you the basic information that you need to know to go out there and actually research a niche and find out if it's going to be worth your time to, to invest the time and effort and money to um, get ranked highly and to sell that product.